Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! Welcome back to my channel. I hope all is well. So the 2020 vancomycin dosen monitoring guidelines have been released and the biggest takeaway is that we don't need to monitor trough levels alone for efficacy and toxicity. Now in this video I will walk you through what led to this recommendation and also show you exactly how to use this new method to obtain the appropriate dose and to monitor patients. So the first vancomycin dosen monitoring guidelines came out in 2009 and these three organizations here got together, reviewed relevant research data and came up with important recommendations. So these are like some of the key takeaways from that guideline. So they recommended to avoid peak concentration monitoring because during this time, a lot of clinicians were monitoring the peak and the trough also in order to ensure efficacy. They recommended also to target an AUC MIC ratio of 400 or higher. And for several reasons that I will discuss later on, they also recommended that you could just use the trough in order to ensure that you're actually hitting that AUC MIC ratio of 400 or higher. Now, some key terms that I just wanted to talk about. So AUC, also known as area under the curve, is referring to the total systemic exposure of a drug, usually over a certain period of time. And we usually use 24 hours in this case. And they have the MIC, the minimum inhibitory concentration, which is the lowest concentration of antibiotic that inhibits the growth of microorganisms in vitro. Now the MIC is a good indicator of antibiotic potency, but unfortunately it doesn't really tell you anything regarding the antimicrobial activity over a period of time. So the AUC MIC ratio is telling you the systemic exposure of the drug, but it's also taking into consideration the MIC, just so you could see that, okay, over this past 24 hours, this was the exposure, but also this is the exposure above the MIC. So you could really get an idea of how efficacious the medication was over that 24 hour period. Now, since those guidelines came out, we've had more experience with using vancomycin in patients. There's been several publications of vancomycin related therapeutic monitoring and dosing. So they came up with the 2020 guideline. Now the 2020 guidelines, very similar to the 2009 guidelines, focuses on serious MRSA infections. So bacteremia, sepsis, pneumonia, etc., And it excludes any MSSA and other pathogens. And for this guideline, they review clinical pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic data, the data and research associated with nephrotoxicity of vancomycin and therapeutic monitoring in order to come up with these recommendations. So the first one, trough only monitoring with a target of 15 to 20 is no longer recommended based on efficacy and nephrotoxicity data in patients with serious infections due to MRSA. The second, in patients with suspected or definitive serious MRSA infections, an individualized target of the AUC-MIC ratio of 400 to 600, assuming that the vancomycin MIC is one, should be advocated to achieve clinical efficacy while improving patient safety. Now, why did they come up with these new recommendations, right? Why did they take away the trough only recommendation from 2009. Now in 2009, even though they wanted us to target an AUC MIC ratio of 400, they also said that the trough can be used as a surrogate marker for targeting this. And the reason was that previously there was a lot of difficulty in measuring the AUC in clinical practice. It required multiple collections of the vancomycin serum concentration and the pharmacokinetic software was not readily available at institutions. But now we have a lot of studies that show that trough levels may not be optimal surrogate for the AUC. And they also found that dosing patients on the targeted AUC actually reduced the risk of kidney injury compared to the trough, which some studies have shown that it doesn't actually reduce the risk of kidney injury when you monitor it. Also now there are several methods to accurately estimate the AUC with limited 
Synthetic Pharmacokinetic Sampling, meaning that you don't have to do multiple collections of the vancomycin level. And this method that they specifically recommend is the Bayesian model. Now the Bayesian method of vancomycin, therapeutic dosing and monitoring comes from the Bayes theorem, which basically said that you can predict something based on prior knowledge related to that thing and the new information that you provide. So in other words, it uses a well-developed vancomycin PK model and data of patients observed vancomycin serum concentrations. So you could provide two serum levels, but you don't necessarily need to, but to get a more accurate targeting of the AUC, it's recommended to provide two serum levels of the vancomycin. Preferably, it should be a peak and a trough, and this will allow you to calculate the optimal dosing regimen. Now, keep in mind that you can also use this in order to determine the empiric dosing for a patient, right? Meaning that you don't have levels yet to input into this uh, PK calculator. You just need the empiric dosing for a patient. So in that case, you can also use this PK software in order to achieve that. And I'll give you guys an example on exactly how you would do this. So once again, the Bayes theorem, it uses the way the drug behaved in population of prior patients. And they refer to this in this case as the Bayesian prior. And then you add the patient specific information in order to predict the dosing regimen. Now, one of the main trials that confirmed the effectiveness of using the Bayesian model for vancomycin therapeutic dosing and monitoring was this one here, which was a three-year prospective study of vancomycin dosing plasma concentrations and outcomes. So for the first year, the clinicians were targeting the trough levels of 10 to 20. And for the second and third year, they used the Bayesian model in order to target an AUC MIC ratio of 400 or higher. It included 252 adults who were 18 years and older. And for the results, they found that 90% of all trough concentrations were therapeutic versus 70% of AUCs and the Bayesian AUC guided dosing was associated with shorter duration of therapy and reduced nephrotoxicity. And now I'm going to give you guys an example on how you will use the Bayesian model and the information that is usually required in order to get the dose and regimen recommendations. So the Bayesian model PK calculator that I'll be using is from clincalc.com, but you can also use one from Global RPH. Now the first thing that you will need is the patient parameters, right? So I've already inputted this information here as you can see. Once you get to this part, the pharmacokinetic modeling you just leave it as it is the volume of distribution is usually estimated for you but if you have a patient who's let's say is critically ill they have more fluid accumulation then you would have to change that and if you scroll down they give you specific recommendations on some of the volume distributions that you can use here for the loading dose we will leave it as no next is the renal function so here I have the patient's serum creatinine and the patient's age and this is the most important part right here here. Do you have any drug levels available? The answer in this case, I put yes, because sometimes you may have a patient come in in the ED and then they give the patient a stat dose of vancomycin before the patient is transferred to the floor to get the maintenance vancomycin. So if that was the scenario, that means the patient already got a dose and then you should be able to get levels after that. But if that's not the case, you could put no and then you'll be able to calculate the empiric dosing in this case. So so I left mine as yes. We gave the patient one dose, one gram over one hour. This is the time when the dose started. And this is the time when I drew the levels. And as I mentioned, it's recommended to get two levels, even though you can just use one. If you get two levels, it's recommended to use the peak. So the peak in this case was within one hour after the infusion. And the trial was about 12 hours after the dose was given. Now we will calculate it. And this is the recommended dosing schedule based on the information that I gave. So 750 milligrams every 12 hours over one hour. And this is the predicted PK. So they are targeting an AUC MIC ratio of 562. So the guidelines recommend to target between 400 to 600. And then this would be the peak in that case and then the trough. And if you scroll down, you have the different dosing options here. Now, going forward after you get this dose, right? This would be the maintenance dose. In terms of when do we check the level again so you can check it again once the medication reaches steady state you could get levels so one or two levels and input the information in the calculator and then you could see the targeted AUC MIC ratio in this case and then you can make adjustments based off that thank you for watching this video 
I hope I was able to provide you with a brief overview of this new way of dosing and monitoring patients on vancomycin. Please, if you have more information to share regarding this topic, please leave it down below. I'll put the link to the guidelines also. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.